<sighs> Sorry about that. I had to do some maintenance with, my, with OBS Studios. I had to uh, get it to work right. And it was uh, some lagging behind. So let's continue part two of um, the whole uh, Robert and other fact uh, on, on the face about RDJ as on the fence about RDJ as Dune. Uh, as Doom. Doom. Not Dune, but Doom. Morning. Last night. Morning. Oh, she said last night. Last night, we experienced Marvel Comic Con, and they, it, it was honestly one of the most, the most boring Mar MCU Comic Con that I've ever seen. I remember all the way back in 2014 when they first started doing these things, and they didn't even have to do a Comic Con back then. They just the had Kevin time. Feige do a random fan event on stage and had all these announcements. That 2014 yes. Comic Con was when they announced Ragnarok and Civil War and Infinity War, and it was epic and it was amazing. But last night was honestly the most boring MCU Comic Con that I've ever experienced. They were going over these movies like Cap 4 and Thunderbolt people don't care about basically information we already knew finally started to get some new stuff with fantastic four but while the aesthetic of fantastic four might look a little bit interesting um fantastic mm -hmm. four first steps awful title i'm really unsure about that movie and it's just nothing to really get me hyped but then they started getting to what i was there for it was the avengers stuff they announced avengers secret wars still happening in 2027 with the russo brothers attached that was already known and then they finally did their big reveal of what's going to happen with avengers 5 because that was supposed to be mm -hmm. kang dynasty and obviously the stuff that happened with jonathan majors happened and so they announced that it was going to be Avengers Doomsday and that Robert Downey Jr. would be back playing Doctor Doom. <laughs> it cut to an ad. Wow. <laughs> Japanese life of him? Turn a thought. And my soul died. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So this got a very strong polarizing reaction because s some people see this as a good thing. A whole lot of people see it as a bad thing. But what no one disagrees on is that this is an act of pure desperation to get RDJ back into the MCU somehow. Now, listen, Iron Man means a lot to me as a character. Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man, uh, my favorite character from the MCU, what really got me into that world. I mean, the, the entire world got me into it, but especially Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. Um, the Avengers means a lot to me as a movie. That is the movie that made me want to be a filmmaker. But here's my problem. He had the best ending that you could have possibly given him in Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame, a lot of people have problems with it. Um, I thought that for, at the very least, Tony Stark got the best send-off that he could be, that he could have gotten, and he had absolutely no reason to ever come back in any way, shape, or form. 
And uh, while I applaud Marvel for not bringing him back as Iron Man, I think that this does uh, uh, speak mm. to a continuous problem with Disney and Marvel. And I want Marvel to get better, but I am so tired of getting my hopes up only to have them let down. And so um, there's two sides to this story. The first, the, I mean, there's two opinions on this. The first opinion is that this is good because this means that Marvel cares about what fans want. They're going back to what worked. They are doing a character that people recognize. They're doing a movie that now has a reason for people to be talking about it. That is a valid opinion to have, but I think that it misunderstands something about the original MCU, and I think that so far it shows that Marvel misunderstands something, and this is something that has been happening across Disney. The reason why the MCU worked was not because RDJ was in it. It was because you had a well-written character in Tony Stark, and um, RDJ happened to be the perfect person to play him because he had a lot of personal experience to give to that character. But um, the first Iron Man was a very well-written, thoughtful movie. Like, like, watch it. Go back and watch it. That was a very well-done movie. That is what truly kicked off the MCU, and it's of the likes that you will never see these days, because even as we've been getting some successful projects here and there, they they still have sort of the same problem, that they're entertaining, but the writing is not there. And and just getting a couple projects that are entertaining but have bad writing um, isn't going to really cut it, especially after we've had so much bad. But the reason why the MCU was successful was not be just because RDJ was in it, it's because you had a well-written character people liked and that they liked to follow, and well-written characters, I should say, that have all gone. And having having RDJ leave the MCU is not what killed it whatsoever. You can see the box office results. People were more than willing to come to the next MCU projects because they had that confidence in it. What happened was you had these characters that were poised to at least carry the MCU for a little while, and you systematically deconstructed them. Maybe some of it was intentional, some of it was not. Doctor Strange became a character who did evil, and he became evil at the end. Hold up a second. Results. People were more than willing to come to the next MCU projects because they had that confidence in it. What happened was you had these characters that were poised to at least carry the MCU for a little while, and you systematically deconstructed them. Maybe some of it was intentional, some of it was not. Doctor Strange became a character who did evil, and he became evil at the end. Um, uh, Spider-Man was not character assassinated, but he did um, sort of become forgotten because of the spell, and he went away. Uh, Chris Hemsworth's Thor was deconstructed into nothing more than a clown. Wanda Maximoff, Scarlet Witch, was turned evil and character assassinated, probably the worst of them all. Uh, Black Widow is dead. Um, uh, none of the new characters that they started with, from Moon Knight to She-Hulk to any of them, really got up. Doctor Strange didn't didn't really become evil, but I can see what she's saying. So, right after the death of Tony Stark in Endgame, and what right after Endgame, the whole death of Tony Stark was kind of signifying the death of the MCU at that point. And these other superheroes... These other actors and characters trying to carry the MCU after his death, it all just kind of just it it all just fell to shit after that, you know. I mean, it wasn't just it wasn't just Robert Downey. It, I mean, it wasn't just Stark dying either. It was also Steve Rogers, you know, and um, the only ones that were left that were oh, oh yeah, and Black Widow. Uh, the only ones that were left that were a part of the uh, OG team from the first Avengers were Thor, Hawkeye, uh, and Hulk. I think so. I think three of them died. Three of them lived. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's six members in all of the Avengers. Um, Five of them having powers and one of them not. Well, actually, four of them having powers, one of them and two of them not. I mean, 
three of them having powers and three of them not. Actually, the ones that didn't have powers, the ones that were just human, or the ones that died. Well, the ones that were super powerful, the, the ones that were actually powered, like their superpowers came from their own being themselves, lived. Thor. Well, that, that's okay, that's probably wrong. That's probably wrong. Uh, okay, so it's like four that didn't have powers. It was it was Tony Stark that we had powers. A Black Widow, Hawkeye, and Steve Rogers. They were they were well the four were human I guess you would say. Uh, Thor was not human. He's not human. Shit. Incredible Hulk is I mean, <sighs> humanish I guess. Yeah, yeah, I may be wrong, but still, the, the it, it 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 died after Endgame and after Tony Stark. So it, it it's just it was very carried. It was barely carried by these these other people that were doing too much. You know, it started off with you know Tom Holland, Spider Man, Peter Parker, and then it slowly went downhill from there. You know, it just just it just kind of came came it came the fuck up off the ground in a big way uh, Loki became good pretty much and is now at the end of the universe and so it was just sort of like the systematic destruction downfall of this entire universe Shang-Chi Eternals did not pick up that so none of the new characters that they pushed picked up uh, the, and all of the other characters either were killed off or um, were character assassinated that is what went one. wrong with the MCU The well, it's finally it. happening. The robots. They're coming. Hi, Avery. Hmm. Maybe that's a good thing. She said oh. what? She said what? What? I was ready like a full 20 minutes before. I can't what are you talking about? We are now commercials and TV. connected to our plan. Watch the TV now. <laughs> it drives better than you do, babe. <laughs> it does. Bye, robot. What if recording high quality content? Editing like a pro and streaming like a star was as simple as hitting record. With Riverside, it's just that. Riverside makes the entire process easy, from recording to editing to streaming without having to jump from app to app. Everything you need is all in one place. Recording is simple. Hit record to capture your live session locally, maintaining the highest quality recording while also creating separate audio and video tracks for each participant. And when it comes to streaming, it's never looked this good. Stream in HD with high quality video and audio customized with your logo, background, and color theme. Engage with your viewers easily through the centralized chat box. Sounds exciting. I'm tired of fucking with OBS Studios. Bringing everyone together across different social channels. Riverside's AI enhanced editor lets you cut down on editing time. Use it to transform your recordings into high quality branded content. Get transcriptions automatically and use them to edit just like a doc or use the chapter timeline where it's divided into chapters that make it easier to skim and scan. And when all's said and done, Riverside goes the extra mile to optimize your content for sharing. Add video captions in various styles, Easily resize your videos for different channels. Plus, with more nifty AI features, Riverside helps you find and create your best clips, turning them into polished viral content at the click of a button. So, ready to start creating? Try Riverside now for everything you need in a conversation studio for free. And so the problem wasn't that certain actors were going to leave, it's just that they didn't set themselves up for success by giving the new characters or the ones that had been supporting characters up to this point 
um, they they didn't they they didn't give them anything. Like Sam Wilson, poised to take over the role of Captain America, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was a terrible show that changed his character, and now there isn't hype for Captain America four. That is the real problem of what happened with Marvel. The writing could not keep up with the characters, and. To be fair, they do have the original writing team that used to, that wrote Endgame, Infinity War, Winter Soldier, and Civil War. I know people are down on Endgame, but that is a, a good track record overall. The Russo brothers are coming back. They haven't done great movies since uh, uh, Endgame, or, or Infinity War, I should say. And uh, a lot of people don't have faith in them coming back. I think that going back to a, an original creative team is a smart move. So far, that's worked with Marvel in terms of James Gunn and Sean Lev uh, Levi, or Levy, mm -hmm. however you pronounce his name. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in the same way that mm -hmm. Peter Jackson and Philippa Boyens came back to do The Hobbit, and that was a disaster. So there's some areas where it seems like it's a good step in the right direction, mm -hmm. but here's my personal problem, that Marvel, they, at least they're not like Star Wars. At least it doesn't feel like they actively despise anybody who watches these movies or who tries to enjoy these characters. But at the same time, here's my big problem, and this has been the problem with Marvel for a long time, and problem with Disney at large, is it's just gimmicks at this point to try to get people back. It's just gimmicks. Deadpool and Wolverine is like that. It's like Hugh Jackman was done in Logan years ago. That was the perfect send-off to his character, but they had to bring him back because they don't have any faith in themselves to make something new. And um, uh, they bring back Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, and uh, Kevin Feige said recently that, oh, I don't know, I guess Wolverine will be recast someday, but as Deadpool jokes and what doesn't seem to be really a joke, they're going to make him do this until he's 90. Hugh Jackman is a approaching his 60s now he was supposed to be retired from this character robert downey jr for a long time was saying he will not come back to the mcu uh then then you know i saw this coming with dr doom the rumors had been out there robert downey jr had all of a sudden changed his tune that he would be coming back to the mcu and he is and and so it's just it's what they're saying online it's stunt casting it's just a stunt to try to get butts into seats and i think it will but it doesn't sit well with me because that's all they've been doing. That They did that in Doctor Strange 2 where, oh, Patrick Stewart is back as Charles Xavier. And in Deadpool and Wolverine, oh, this character from the Fox universe appears. And this character from the Fox universe that you, you forgot about has appears. And it's just, there's no substance to it. It's just a stunt. And that's what Marvel has been doing up to this point. And yeah, you can look at it on the one hand of that they're trying to give... Um, they're trying to give the audience what they want, but I'm not sure, especially with the reaction to this, is that it, it's what the audience want. We were pretty clear we didn't want Robert Downey Jr. to come back and taint that original character send-off in any way, and if he's going to come back to the multiverse, well... Th th that goes back to more of what the audience doesn't want, and that's what I think is the irony about Deadpool and Wolverine, because they make fun of the multiverse of the MCU and how it's failed, and how uh, other people, uh, like the Flash movie, tried to do it. The Flash movie tried to do more of these stunts with Michael Keaton, Batman, and all of that. And it's just completely cannibalized itself. And the reason why all of this multiverse nonsense has cannibalized itself is because it's substanceless. It's just a stunt to get butts into seats, and there's nothing behind it. And this this Robert Downey Jr., uh, Dr. Doom, what it basically is, as we understand, is it's basically evil Tony Stark from another universe. And, like, like the, there's the argument there that that could be interesting if done right, that the person who saved the universe is coming back in evil form and now he's going to destroy the universe. And yes, Avengers Doomsday is a good title, but I just, I have a hard time trusting that this is going to be well written, even with the writers they've chosen. That is a big plus. But, um, like, but it just, it just, because of the track record so far, it just feels like more stunts. And I'm just like, you know, this entire time I've been saying, hey, the X-Men can save the MCU. Because what I'm saying here is, these are fresh, new, interesting characters that I am excited to see the new stories from. But what we've been getting is actors who were supposed to be retired from these universes altogether coming back as an act of pure desperation just to get butts into seats just to get people to watch these movies again and it doesn't excite me because i'm not seeing the interest i'm not really seeing the story behind it like it could be interesting but i'm just not confident because 
Marvel can't realize the main problem. It's not that you don't have the actors. It's that your writing got so bad. Not every Marvel movie was perfect, of course, but they used to have the best movies, like the Winter Soldier and stuff like that, that would carry the whole thing and good character writing and all of that. And then as they failed because of bad movies and bad character writing, they've just gone to fall back to rely on stunts. It's what Star Wars did where they brought Luke in for the Mandalorian season two finale as a deep fake Luke. And everyone was like, oh, Star Wars is saved. But then it didn't lead to anything good because it was just a stunt. And that's why I am so skeptical on what's going to happen with the MCU with this because... It's like you're just doing more of that. You're just doing the key jangling, the easy way to get people talking, the easy way to get people to come to see the movie. And I'm thinking, why don't you just make a good movie somehow? You're like, why don't you just start making good movies again? Because you have the resources. You have the X-Men as an entire resource for characters that have proven to be successful in the past, something that is possible to make good movies from, and you're not using them so far and at this point I'm relieved that they're not using them because I'm not convinced of, of them doing good movies again as of now but um I mean I think that you know we cannot ex we cannot expect Deadpool to do another good movie on his own we just can't the f only movie he had on his own was the first Deadpool that was the only movie that he had on his own that was his movie Deadpool 1 but even that movie had other characters from X Men. It had Colossus. It had um, this new, this you know, the whatever the whole name is, a uh, 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 Warhead, uh, Nuclear Warhead. I forgot her name. Uh, shit, it was IMDb here. Real quick. Um, it's like Robert Downey Jr. for so long was like, I am done. I want to do something better. He w went out and won his Oscar. And here he is coming back. And I'm just not convinced that this is going to be good. And I'm, I'm just like, but who is there to fight him at this point? Because all of the characters in the M she played she's, uh... MCU that people cared about have kind of either been scattered or destroyed. So what you're... Uh, Nega Sonic Teenage Warhead. What you're probably gonna get in these movies is a hodgepodge. You're gonna get more huge. You know, Tony, you know, Deadpool, he didn't really have. He still wasn't on his own. That's his movie, Deadpool 1, but even the first Deadpool, it had other characters. You know, like I said, some, some characters, some, some members of the team of X Men. And it did not, it did not show Professor Xavier. It didn't even show Cyclops or whatever. You know, uh,. It showed Beast in the second one because Deadpool actually officially goes to the uh, to the uh, the X Mansion, uh, Xavier's mansion, the, the you know one the wonderful gifted youngsters, um, and we see Beast. He shuts the door while Colossus and and Deadpool are arguing. But my point is, from the very first movie, we see that Deadpool is going to pull other IPs. Other other members of the comics, like the X Men comics, because because really Deadpool is actually an X Men an X Men property, uh, or a part of he's a part of that universe. He's not a part of the Spider Man universe. He's not a part of the uh, what's the other Fox universe? Um, well, pretty much Fox is anything related to X Men. I, b I believe I believe Dell Devil was Fox. I, I don't. Let's see, 2003 film. I'm just going to look at the Wikipedia real quick. That's the first time we see Sean, Sean Favreau in a Marvel movie. Was that was a Dell Devil.
no, so so Daredevil was uh was released by 20th Century Fox. So Daredevil is also Fox. I'm gonna look at the Marvel Fox movies. Fox Studios Marvel movies. Okay, so we got Deadpool one and two, Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four Rise of Silver Surfer. Uh, Shang-Chi, apparently, Thor, didn't even know that, all the X-Men films, including the New Mutants, they still haven't brought that back, and Daredevil. So, no Spider-Man, no Doctor Strange, none of that, all that's MCU now. Of course, Tobey, uh, Tobey Maguire is all Sony. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, there's only like three major studios that I could think of. How many studios are Marvel characters? Seven studios. I, I said it wrong, but uh, it, it got the gist of what I was saying. Disney, Universal, Warner Brothers, Sony Pictures, 20th Century Fox, Lionsgate, and Paramount. Okay. Let me look at Universal, Warner Brothers, and Lionsgate. Uh, Lionsgate Marvel movies. Huh. Hulk. But these are like really the cartoons, I think. Oh, the Punisher War Zone Punisher. Punisher War Zone. The Punisher is Lionsgate. Okay. Universal Studios Marvel movies. Oh, Hulk. Oh, Iron Man. I didn't know the first Iron Man was um, Universal Studios. The Hulk and the Quibble Hulk. What, what, what else did it say? Um, Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers Marvel movies. It said Marvel, not DC. What are the Marvel movies made by Warner Brothers? I don't really think there are any. Uh, Shaq Steel, I didn't know Shaq Steel had a, I didn't know Shaq had a movie. <laughs> You know Shaq used to be a, he used to be an actor, okay, alongside uh, uh yeah he used to be an actor. So some of these people are just doing what he did, you know, acting in the movies because their names are big. Jackman Wolverine, once again another stunt casting thing, uh, or stunt bring back. You're gonna probably I I, w I would assume that Chris Evans is probably gonna come back as a different character. I wouldn't be surprised if the entire. Rainfall yeah. hunter. You've come in search of the secret lost vault of Pandora. You ready to kick some ass? Okay, let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Catch! If the legends were true, I'm the only one who can open the vault. Free to applaud. <laughs> Follow me this way. I have a tremendous sense of direction. <laughs> Nobody kills me but me. Here I come. Put the window up. I don't want to. It's pink. <laughs> Get a bullet, go get a bullet. Beat the lead, come up. 
MCU crew came back as different characters because they don't want to destroy those characters' endings, but they want to get those actors back just to do anything to get people back. And it just doesn't sit well with me at this point. And, and at the Comic-Con, they're like, oh, Fantastic Four is going to be in it in a movie that I, I don't know that it's going to be any good. Thunderbolts is going to be in it. Those are characters that I don't care about. Those aren't exciting me to see this new Avengers movie at all. And it's unfortunate because what was good about the original Avengers films is it was always building to a new story. It always felt like it was going to be its own story based on its own comic. This is something that they are specifically making up in order so that they can just have some excuse to bring Robert Downey Jr. back. They're doing an Ultimates comics and they're introducing the idea in these Ultimates comics that are coming up of an alternate universe Tony Stark who is Doctor Doom. They're doing that in the comics specifically so they can have an excuse to do this movie. And it just feels like more stunts from Marvel out of pure desperation just to do anything to get something to work and it feels like they haven't necessarily learned their lesson or anything about what was the real problem not that you didn't have these actors but because you can't make good movies and all you can do anymore is these stunts to try to get to get people to watch and um uh people are pointing out like they've wanted to see dr doom in the mcu for years and they wanted somebody to be cast that actually fits the character tony stark does not fit dr doom robert downey jr does not fit dr doom and he's not going to be playing the character we liked in uh the original mcu like the charismatic tony stark it's a completely different character just slapping his name on it in order to try to get people in like, I, I want to be proven wrong, as always, with this stuff, but it just feels I, I, like I'm so tired of being led on by Marvel and being let down and led on by all these things and being let down. It's kind of what I was saying in my Harley video the other day, that I'm just getting so exhausted from it and uh, that I, I just think that this this act of pure desperation does not bode well C can you make a good movie that's what i'm really questioning at this point um can these people pull these together can you make characters that people care about again because these various stunts just aren't working i would have well preferred that we got a recast for wolverine rather than having hugh jackman come back honestly you know they can't recast anybody they can recast these uh, actors as different characters they just can't recast anyone even t'challa ha <sighs> So, it, like, I'm not as upset about it as I was last night, but I can tell you, after trying to have some optimism for the MCU going forward, uh, last night I was feeling like, no, sticking a fork in it, it, it is completely dead. It, it, what was the good of the MCU is completely dead, and I hope that I'm wrong, but this just does not that. seem good to me. I kind of feel a little bad to see Robert Downey Jr. coming back after he said that he wasn't for so long. And uh, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. And if they can prove me wrong, great, but they have to prove me wrong. I have to see these movies actually turn out again before I'm convinced that the MCU can ever be revived um, but, uh, that is all I got for you guys today. Thank you, patrons, as always, for supporting this channel. If you want to support this channel, check out the link in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Bring similar tabs together. Organize tabs with ease using AI in Chrome.
Kind of, I kind of just want to stick on topic. Sorry. Who could play Victor? Who could play Victor Von Doom? Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Me? I know who I am. I'm a dude. Playing the dude disguises another dude. What? Man, when I heard this news, I wasn't exactly uh, sure how to feel about it because, I mean, he's Tony Stark. And I know with this whole multiverse thing, it's to be expected that we're gonna see other variants of our heroes and these people. But I wasn't really expecting this. <laughs> Now I understand some people might be incensed by this because for them, Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark and he'll always be Tony Stark. I personally can imagine how it would kind of downplay the sacrifice of Iron Man if we just get him come back and we keep seeing him over and over again. It's almost as though there's no need to ever feel sad about Tony Stark dying because he'll just come back as another variant, forget that other one. And just like that, his sacrifice was forgotten. When you can always jump through one multiverse to the other, then the meaning of those people who exist in any one of those multiverses ceases to matter for me as the audience anyway. Don't cry, you'll see him again, or we'll see him again. I want to be able to feel the sense of loss that the audience feels when they see a character die. It's different if they're wearing makeup and this is Star Trek where apparently you have multiple people playing different characters or different aliens, but if we're seeing Victor Von Doom played by Robert Downey Jr. and we're gonna see his face, his hair, his exact style, then for me it kind of undermined the presence of his character as is. And then people were making jokes, saying something along the lines of, man, I can't wait to see Chris Evans coming back as Magneto. <laughs> It does get a little bit annoying. I mean, this might not seem like a big deal because it's our chance to see Iron Man or Tony Stark being played as a miscreant. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And now this character has successfully done both with the help of the multiverse. Can I get your autograph? Yeah, sure. It's Pam. What do you want in life, Kevin Von Eric? I want to be world heavyweight champion and to be with my family. I'll be with my brothers. We could be one of those modern super couples. We can do anything. Just being together. Hmm? Eve Online on Mac immerses you in a universe with thousands of star systems like never before. Follow a path of your own choosing and become a titan of industry. Explore the wonders of the universe. Or join record breaking PvP battles and add your name to two. My bad. God damn to. <laughs> Multiverse for me is honestly a tired idea. It's everybody's excuse to be lazy. Nothing matters. It's it's basically a cop out. Remember how they had this um, era where everything was a dream and hey, this entire thing that happened, it was all just a dream. And now it's to the point of making people severely irascible whenever they find a plot that ends up with that as the conclusion. That's the modern version of that, the multiverse. And it's this timeline and that timeline. You can just jump around to different timelines to the point where you don't even know which one is the original. And I think, I mean, this just may be me and this is nothing against Robert Downey Jr. because I love him. I love him as an actor. He's really talented, but um, he already played a superhero. Now, what it does is if he's playing as a superhero or other, everybody else has this different variant because maybe somebody, I don't know, was grew up on the street with him and instead of it having been someone else, which would have caused the butterfly effect for Tony Stark to become who he is later on, maybe he was a friend with somebody who grew up next door to him who was not the original person in the first timeline and that shifted his whole plot 
to become Victor Von Doom later on. So it's kind of a way of confusing people as well, because if you're always shifting from timeline to timeline and showing all these different variants, there's never any need for continuity. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but modern movies nowadays, they lack continuity. It's like they're not even trying. It's like in once, it's not even across movies. It's within the same show, same episode and everything. I've done reviews of Doctor Who and the Acolyte, and you see examples of this here. Even in Marvel itself, it's done the same thing with the whole thing with Nick Fury and his eye. Everyone forgot about that because they think, well, people have short attention spans and short memories, so if their brains aren't working at 100% capacity, why do we need to uphold that level of quality? They'll just eat it anyway and absorb anything Marvel. It's basically a marketing ploy. They know that people love Robert Downey Jr., so they're like, bring him back, bring him back. People liked him a lot. Well, we killed that it anyway and absorb anything Marvel. It's basically a marketing ploy. They know that people love Robert Downey Jr. So they're like, bring him back, bring him back. People liked him a lot. They know that anyway and absorb anything Marvel. It's basically a marketing ploy. They know that people love Robert Downey Jr. So they're like, bring him back, bring him back. People liked him a lot. Well, we killed him off and that really hit them where it hurts to the point where they're still talking about it now. But what if we bring him back? and then shift it so they forget about Tony Stark and now they like Victor Von Doom because let's make him the villain, right? Yes, and he's of the lighter shade too, so it doesn't matter. It all works for us anyway. It's not about crafting this cohesive, engaging story anymore. It's about, hey, tickets, this person, let's do gimmicks, let's do cameos. Deadpool made fun of this, and it's just sowing confusion and nostalgia. Let's bring back Andrew Garfield as, I don't know, freaking Doctor Strange, and it's really stupid. It's annoying. I know they're trying to rake in cash from people, and I know there's people who are okay with this. At first, I was like, oh wow, it's good to see him again. He's still in the MCU, but if he's not wearing makeup, you know, what, are they gonna do some half-baked plot and then expect that Robert Downey Jr. being in there is going to be enough to pull the movie? It doesn't mean that the movie they're making is gonna be bad, but I can understand the consternation that some people have about it because eventually, even the most diehard fans of Marvel are gonna get tired of being jerked around. Continuity and character development are the backbone of good storytelling. And if you're just bringing in someone as a gimmick, but you're ruining the continuity or nothing matters anymore, this is why, though. then why should we get invested? No, I know this seems like a speck of a problem and a piquant little meal that everyone's ingesting and you won't really feel it go down with all the roughage that you're already ingesting, but I could see it leading to a bigger problem if, even if the movie does do well, where they're like, wow, this worked, let's do it again. Let's take somebody else that people really like, and they'll watch it just for that person's performance. Screw storytelling, right? Samuel Jackson is an exquisite actor, and he wasn't enough to save their TV show. They also botched my boy, and they basically retired him before they actually retired him, brought him back just to humiliate him, just like they did with David Tennant in Doctor Who. You can feel the desperation, and I think people are calling it out because it's so painfully obvious. They don't know how to be creative anymore, so they're expecting that a much-loved character, who was an actor, rather, that was playing another character, will just come back and people will come back because he's back from the dead now, but in an alternate universe. And narratively, I think that it could work on some level. I don't think that it's necessarily at its core the worst idea to see another variant of Tony Stark having become Victor Von Doom if that is in fact where they're going with this and he's not wearing makeup and being a completely different person because if Tom Holland had to fight against this guy, which I'm guessing there would be some kind of drama infused with that, then yes, I imagine once he's unmasked, it would really screw with him because he just said goodbye to what was essentially a father figure to him other than, you know, Uncle Ben or Happy or who have you. But other than that, everything else surrounding it, it's setting up a very bad precedent. And there's already a lot that's been set up. I mean, they kind of have to say it's a variant. That was like the only reason in the movie, in a, from a movie perspective, why they use the same actor. Because it's not about the character, it's about the actor at this point. That's, that's the only excuse that's why. That's how you could. That's that is how you can explain Johnny Storm and Steve Rogers. And yeah, I know that people wouldn't even think about 
uh, Johnny Storm much when they saw when they finally got to know Steve Rogers. And I know people initially thought, well, didn't Chris Evans already play Johnny Storm? But people at that point didn't really care back in the day, but now they do, you know. And and that the, they're using that variant as a way to explain why we still have why we still have a, a, a Johnny Storm and Tony Stark. I mean Johnny Storm and and Steve Rogers. You know, uh, both of them are dead now, but that that's that's why is that basically any actor can play any character at this point. You know, they they would they, they would even do so with the uh, that got off that that awful Fantastic Four with Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm. So though that's that's the how it is. It's a variant. They have to explain if RDJ is going to be Doctor Doom. He has to be a variant. There's no other no there's no other way to explain it. Up as bad precedents in Marvel's the point where. You, you kind of expect it from them now. And I love Deadpool and Wolverine, and I know spoilers, minor spoilers, but Deadpool, I mean, he this was in the trailer, but Deadpool even thought that Marvel's success was incumbent upon his return and him being Marvel Jesus. It was a tongue-in-cheek joke in the show because yeah. that's essentially what they're doing Maybe. with characters now and doing with actors, apparently, except that Marvel didn't get the memo that this doesn't necessarily work with actors unless you're returning them for iconic roles that they already had been playing. If they were gonna recast Hugh Jackman as somebody else other than Wolverine, people would initially be like, oh my God, it's Hugh Jackman. Jackman? Jack yeah, Hugh Jackman. I love him. Oh my God, though. What in this skibbity scat? He's playing Spider-Man now? I don't know. At this point, it just feels as though Marvel is just plodding along with all the endless people, characters in this gigantic catalog that they had. I don't know why they're fixated on the stupid multiverse thing. It's driving me insane. Like something that really got me into Marvel because I used to like Spider-Man and stuff. My father is the one that exposed me to a lot of this because he had all the characters, I mean characters, he had all the comics and um, the ones that he had, there was one called The Impossibles too that he told me about that I didn't even know existed, which is probably what inspired The Incredibles. I could be wrong. But yeah, there's all these treasure trove of characters in the Marvel Universe, and instead of making new movies and franchises with those, like what they did with Guardians of the Galaxy, and even Deadpool, didn't even know those characters existed. I hate this fucking computer. It's so goddamn slow. It's every day with it. God damn. Just this the slightest things every day, man. Every goddamn day is the same thing. I can't get enough. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like I got my first exposure to those characters on the big screen with 20th Century Fox or with with Disney, Marvel, whatever whoever it was. It doesn't matter. On the big screen is where I first saw a lot of these characters. So it's very rich to me that they're going backwards. I mean, yes, Von Doom is... We've seen him already in that Fantastic Four movie that everybody hates. And I only liked because Cole uh, was playing in it. And I did like his character from the little bit that I did see of him. But yeah, it's he's had portrayals before. Just like in Guardians of the Galaxy, where you're given other characters to come in and new actors to play them. I think it's smart for them to bring in new actors and fresh flesh. Hold on. Characters. So it's very rich to me that they're going backwards. I mean, yes, Von Doom is, we've seen him already in that Fantastic Four movie that everybody hates. And I only liked because Cole uh, was playing in it. And I did like his character from the little bit that I did see of him. But yeah, it's, he's had portrayals before. Just like in Guardians of the Galaxy, where you're given 
other characters to come in and new actors to play them, I think it's smart for them to bring in new actors and fresh flesh. That sounds disgusting when I say it like that. But fresh people so that they can have a chance to be iconic with their role. So you're gonna have Robert Downey Jr. be iconic in his role as Iron Man and then as Victor Von Doom. It's already messy as it is because Kang, they just built up that whole thing with Kang and because of their whole thing with the, the fiasco with Jonathan Majors, they're like, you know what, this is too much drama. We're just gonna leave you. Black lives do not matter in this scenario. Our asses do. Um, so deuces, we're just gonna pretend you never happened. And uh, who do we got next? Um, yeah, ne the other villain. Remember this villain? We're just gonna write off Kang like nothing happened. You couldn't even recast Kang. Like, I mean, at this point, it would have been better because of how they built him up to recast him at this point. <laughs> But they're just gonna flip it midway and just expect all of us to forget that that's what we were doing with Loki and with Ant-Man and with the MCU in general is just weird. And the people screaming over this, I, I, I feel for them. I feel for their excitement. But this is the very reason why Marvel and Disney feel that they don't have to even try anymore because the people will just eat whatever slop. It's like if you like somebody and they're speaking and they know you're not paying attention and the guy or the girl is like, yeah, and I just killed a whole bunch of kittens in my basement last night. And you're like, oh my God, really? That's so amazing. Damn, you slay, man. Like, I mean, dude, that's what it kind of feels like. And there are people like my father who most of the Marvel stuff that come out, he likes. He's just a big fan of Marvel, so it doesn't really matter. He will point out some issues, like, hey, I would have thought that we're doing that with King, huh? Oh well, yeah, I'm excited for the next movie, and they'll just, he'll just eat, like, he just reacts. That, that is just Marvel, it's entertaining, things go boom, pretty pictures, illustrations, and that is good enough for a lot of people, and that's fine. I'm not trying to throw shade at those people at all because we're all different, we have different personalities and different likes. There's some people though who like uh, more intuitive things, and if you're making a whole universe and you're making it tie into a bigger arc, then you're basically telling the fans or telling the people, we think you're smart enough, not saying other people who don't care about that aren't smart, that's not what I'm saying. We think you're smart enough or uh, we think that fans like this like when we do consistent continuity arcs. And uh, since we've been doing that with tying everything into our TV shows, that means that things matter. That's why for you to get Deadpool and Wolverine, even though you can enjoy it as it is, there are still beats in there that are tied into Loki and we've taken narrative plot devices or whole arcs from Loki to tie it into the movies. Yeah, we do all of that because that's what we care about. This is the kind of franchise that you're walking into. So it's expected as fans when we're coming in that that's what we're gonna continue to get because they cared about continuity in the past. Wait. So they care about it in the future. Wait, no, they don't. Now, the way I think this would work is if Tony Stark, see, he's Tony Stark to me. Robert Downey Jr. would be in makeup. I mean, I think I wouldn't want him to be a Tony Stark or a version of Tony Stark that just happens to be Victor Von Doom. I would hope that Marvel or the writers who were going to be heading off this new era would make him into just Victor Von Doom so we can see the range of his acting, but also so we can give the other, the character a chance to shine. If we're essentially just seeing Robert Downey Jr. playing himself in a different costume, I think it's going to detract away from the character of Victor Von Doom. So I'm gonna be already looking at this character as, oh, it's Tony Stark, a variant of Tony Stark, instead of, oh my God, who's this new villain and character that I've never seen before from scratch? If they're going to go with the angle of, of, oh, he's evil Tony Stark. I don't think that a lot of people are gonna be okay with that, especially given that this is following the loss of Tony Stark. And then they're gonna make him come back and face off with Tom Holland and he's gonna be redeemed or Tom Holland's gonna be like, I don't wanna hurt him because he's my father, sort of. If anything, it could be a look into the psyche of Spider-Man and how he's gonna have to deal with making very painful decisions. And maybe that's a way to handicap the character because I can imagine if I went to an alternate version of our reality and I saw my dad, but he's a super villain, I think I would have a lot 
lot of trouble having to put him down. Like, I don't, it's painful even thinking about it. But I know that people want to give him a chance to also be shown as a, a big villain, but they don't want to waste Robert Downey Jr. I get it, but then why not save him until the very end then to kill him off? You know what's also funny to me? They brought all these people back. Tony Stark made this humongous sacrifice, and yet we still have super villains that makes it seem as though the snap never happened. <laughs> That's exactly. what's rich to me. This is exactly. all part of the same Marvel universe. It's not like it's some different phase now. Like with comets, you have different things. And the comic medium is a little different. So all of those issues, you can excuse that because narratively, it's way easier to put out a lot of these comics than these movies since they're so freaking expensive and cost as much as every single country's freaking treasury combined just to make. <laughs> but it does feel like a lazy cash grab considering that we already had an emotionally conclusion to the MCU with Endgame. So now it's like, well, we're just gonna keep beating this dead horse until it's a skeleton, and then we're gonna grind them bones into freaking ash. And not even then will we stop grinding it until this freaking soil is thoroughly set on fire by the sheer friction of her ass cheeks being ground down to their freaking bone tips. Emotional beats like the ones we got with Tony dying and certain people not coming back are supposed to be transitory. It's not supposed to be this recurring thing where you see the face of the character over and over again. While I understand where they're coming from and where they might be going with it, I don't think that it's a good idea, especially given the state of Marvel right now, but I could be wrong. But just judging on how I personally feel about it, it doesn't personally make me excited to see this because it, to me, looks as though they are just plotting along and hoping that people will just be blind to what they're doing and uh, just, just keep them in business for as long as it counts. I gave you a good story, but now we need to continue that story like what they did with Walking Dead and Negan. And then it just kept going for a long time after that with all these spinoffs that, yeah, they're kind of sort of entertaining, but you notice they're nowhere near as popular as the show and people just took a nosedive in viewership with The Walking Dead after the whole Negan thing because it was just useless. People were just existing and walking around for no freaking reason. You didn't even get them the satisfying ending that they wanted. We got Endgame. We got, uh, what was the other one with all the Spider-Men coming in uh, far from home? We got that. But they've opened up this can of worms with the multiverse now that it's gonna be very hard to put it back unless they completely reboot the whole thing, which I think they don't wanna do because they probably have no idea how to do it or they realize it would have to be a pretty big sacrifice to do so, starting from the ground up and they seem to be creatively bankrupt at the moment that they don't even know how to do that or remember how to do it. way the guy in the audience that was heard saying it's Robert Downey Jr. right before he was revealed is a piece of shit if you had a friend with you or anybody watching this that was going to be waiting for the reveal you just took that from them what was the point of you even recording this or saying that in the first place you just ruined the whole reveal bro like it's not necessary I'm glad that when I watched this for the first time I didn't actually hear his voice say that I saw it on Twitter and it was at the part right before Robert Downey Jr. unveiled himself but like a section before that, the guy's like, it's Robert Downey Jr. Bitch, you could have shut your freaking mouth. Who could play Victor Von Doom? Robert Downey Jr. You hear that stupid sausage mouth? He's a one guy and he said it mad loud too. Like if there's anybody around him and they didn't know, you just ruined that for them, you fucking asshole. I really do think that in some cases, people should be allowed to carry around water balloons that, you know, have water in them only so that you can pop them in people's faces for situations like this. You cur. Anyway, could this work? Maybe so. Do I think it's the best idea? Absolutely not. And then is Pepper gonna see yeah. him and be like, ooh, I've missed you. Let's let's go to the room and hug each other. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh. I also liked how they tried to kind of sneak and ease it in with what they did in spoilers for Deadpool and Wolverine, but for what they did with, it, with, with the the Johnny Storm or the Flame On guy and um, Captain America. But that played into the parody of it. That made more sense. Because in the realms of Deadpool, it's funny. It, it would have been funnier if they did this beforehand and then they made the Deadpool and Wolverine movie with that joke. But considering they're seriously considering this being a part of the MCU, it doesn't make it funny. It just makes it kind of sad. But yeah, I don't know. Let's give them a chance and see what happens. I don't know if this is going to be enough to save the MCU. It's going to need a lot more than just one success. Guardians of the Galaxy couldn't save it and neither could Deadpool and Wolverine. At some point, 
point they're gonna be fresh out of cameos. Either that or nobody's gonna really care. It's like you laugh at one person's joke who's never had anyone laugh at them before and they're like, oh my God, people like that. Let me keep telling the same joke over and over and over again every chance I get. Funny, right guys? Remember, wasn't it funny like the first 30 times and the people at the table are just rubbing their temples until a hole is formed in them because they don't know how to tell this person because they've already done it a million times that the joke is no longer funny and is no longer a joke because you keep just redoing it over and over again and rinsing and reusing and repeating. Watch, if this movie does well, they're gonna do the same thing with a bunch of their actors. Robert Downey Jr. is not gonna be the only one, I swear to you. Anyways, what do you guys think? You think this is a good idea or do you think it's going to crash and burn? Hmm. Let's keep going. Let's see what Snarky J has to say. I hate this bitch, but she may actually have a point. Yes, I have spent the better part of two years talking about this, but bringing Robert Downey Jr. back into the MCU as a villain has effectively doomed the MCU, and I'm not even happy about that pun at this point. <laughs> Hi y'all, Snarky J Cosplay here. So a few days ago at San Diego Comic Con, it was announced that Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man himself, was coming back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a new role. And first and foremost, I'm gonna tell you that I'm one of the people that had a sh fit and is still pissed off about this. And we're gonna get into that in just a minute. So Robert Downey Jr. is coming back to play Dr. Fucking doom and i get it okay i've already seen the posts i understand the whole well at one point iron man was dr doom i don't give a sh about any of that okay the fact that there's some half-assed simple lore in like a one-off what if comic series does not f matter to me that is the exact same justification that they used for a female silver surfer and i'm what? not buying it. To me, Doctor Doom mm. is genuinely one of the cooler and more unhinged villains in Marvel in general, and I have been waiting years for them to bring that character to life in a way that is meaningful. And nothing could be less meaningful than bringing back the face of the MCU as that villain. It is nothing more than a desperate cash grab from a company that knows they are almost fully underwater with their now exhausted fan base. I just want to point out what absolute bullshit this is. See, the MCU was basically kicked off in a big way by Iron Man in 2008. And until Endgame, Tony Stark, Iron Man, played by Robert Downey Jr., was the f***ing face of the MCU. He was at the center of all the marketing. And on top of that, he was basically the leader of the Avengers. I get that that's typically Captain America's job, but we all knew who was wearing the pants in that bromance. And it was beautiful. It was great. Robert Downey Jr. really put his heart and soul into that role. We all believed that he was probably the realest casting choice that they could have picked for Tony Stark. It's basically impossible to separate Iron Man from Robert Downey Jr. at this point, the same way it was impossible to separate Wolverine from Hugh Jackman. And so the problem with bringing him back as a villain is that not only did we get the most dramatic and tragic send-off of any Marvel character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in Endgame when Tony Stark sacrificed sacrificed himself to save the universe, galaxy, whatever you want to call it. Now having his face be that of Doom makes zero f***ing sense. They haven't set anything up in the multiverse to explain this. I think the whole variant multiverse thing is a way of justifying nonsense and bullshit that is getting really old to begin with. But having the hero of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe, now taking over as the villain of the entire Cinematic Universe. I get that Robert Downey Jr. is a tremendous actor. I don't get Doctor Doom from him. Personally, if they were going to make Doctor Doom the villain, John Hamm. 
he's right there. He's right there. I'm not even saying this because I have such a big crush on him from Mad Men. John Hamm could f***ing do Victor Von Doom so well. Honestly, I think the whole Doctor Doom thing is a cool storyline for the next Avengers thing, but I think it's absolute bullshit that they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. to do this. And when you think about it, it really is just a desperate pull for money. Everybody since the death of Iron Man has been clamoring for Robert Downey Jr. to come back. But I think what they're missing or choosing to ignore it is that people were calling for Robert Downey Jr. to come back in the form of Iron Man because that was the last time that the MCU was good. So we kind of just see him as the face of better times. Bringing the guy back as a villain is a ham-fisted attempt of getting us more interested in their irrelevant, poorly written bullshit. And come on, announcing him with a plastic f***ing mask? They had Tom Hiddleston show up fully dressed as Loki one time and they have him in a f***ing plastic mask. That's like if they announced somebody as the new Hulk and they had him in Hulk hands. To me, this is egregious. I personally think they could have continued with the whole Kang Dynasty plotline purely because there are a few people more easily recast than Kang who's had millions of variants across time and space. It really would not have been that difficult anything but this and the worst part is is that I have not said this to anybody other than in my discord but I was literally planning a Doctor Doom cosplay before this I made the mask and everything and I already bought all the materials so I'm kind of like I have to finish it but now I don't even want to bitch quit cussing all the fucking time shut up because everybody's Cuss gonna be once. like oh are you doing Robert Downey Jr no I'm not I thought Marvel was going in a good direction because after watching Deadpool and Wolverine and seeing all the easter eggs and cameos and all the funny things that they threw in for these dedicated obsessive Marvel fans like myself that I thought man they're listening they heard us and then they go ahead and do this bullshit. I'm sorry you know the only people that are gonna be really excited about this are the same people that want to act like Josh Brolin playing both Cable and Thanos is the same thing newsflash it's not and normies who don't understand anything and are probably gonna look at Victor Von Doom and think oh my god evil Iron Man that's cool they're not the same anyways I've been gathering my thoughts on this for a period of time now and I just I'm in shock at what an incredibly stupid move this is going to be I don't care how you justify it you know there's a million ways to skin a cat doesn't mean I want to see it skinned I feel terrible for having made that joke with them in here but anything for the bit any shrivel of hope that I had left for the MCU especially brought on by how awesome Deadpool and Wolverine was is now down the toilet and that's all from me I've been snarky J thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe for more snarky J check me out on Instagram and if you'd like to support me this channel and my content creation do check out and consider subscribing to my patreon for exclusive photo shoot sets and content I will add links to all of those in the description below and let me know your thoughts on Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom in the comments below I need to activate my phone. That was through October. Hmm. I think I'll wait um, on and on a um... I'm trying to find a way to... use my points. I can't even do that.
Hmm. Well, that's what Snarky J has to say. I mean, pretty much the same boat, kind of. I don't like it either. I I've been saying that Tony Stark should, I mean, Bob Down Jr. shouldn't come uh, come back. Well, actually, I've been saying that Tony Stark shouldn't come back. That's what I said. That's that's what I meant. Uh, let's see. Let's see what Eric has to say. Oh God. Live from the City, city of angels. angels, I did not expect to be on here Saturday night after midnight on the East Coast, 9.15 here in L.A. We have an MMT emergency edition. I was in the middle of a movie when I ran out to use the restroom. Of course, just check Twitter for a second, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what did I just read? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what the hell they're thinking here tonight. Let's talk about Robert Downey Jr. returning to the M. MCU as Dr. Fucking Doom? What is going on? Let's watch the reveal. This is from Hall H. Thank God I'm not in Hall H. <laughs> I tell you guys how much I enjoy not being at Comic Con. I, I would much rather be here watching it from a screen than in the middle of this mass of humanity as we see. Here comes RDJ as Dr. Doom. WTF. Okay, pause. You heard someone go, Jared Leto. Well, that'd be better. I mean, name an actor, everybody. Jason Jonathan Michaels. Majors. Better. <laughs> I mean, guys, what the fuck are we doing? Because this is, I'm telling you, I, I got to get into this because all I saw was the headline. He's returning. I don't care how many variants and how many things that we're going to do with timelines and bullshit and the TLA or whatever the fuck thing is from Deadpool Wolverine. Guys, remember, I'm not a comic book nerd, okay? I don't care about the fucking religious text and the canon and all of the legacy. Dude, I grew up watching this stuff. I love Super Friends. I love Spider-Man as a kid, but I'm just here to tell you I don't fucking care who's, you know, this really weird fucking backward character. Look, it's someone that's in episode five. Like, you know, that's what Deadpool does well. Hey, this is uh, the character from episode five of season two of Loki. That's me. I'm like, who are these people? I don't even care. But I will say this because I know everyone, all the fans out there, are, I live this shit. I'm a comic book nerd. This is my whole fucking life, man. Here's the deal, is that I know who Dr. Doom is, I know who Iron Man is, and I will tell you that I can't think of any conceivable way that this will ever work. I don't know what the hell Kevin Feige was smoking. I'm not sure who he has in line to write this shit. I'm going to tell you that I have, in the course of, I was just hanging out tonight watching another overrated movie in Diddy. Oh, my God, we've got another one to ban. We're going to destroy this film tomorrow night. Another one of these films. It's another God. The roller coaster of 2024 in movies has been just really what I've lived over the past week between me loving Deadpool and Wolverine then watching a film tonight. I'm like, good Lord, overrated. And now I go, what are we doing? I go from loving Marvel to hating Marvel with this decision. You don't do this. If you're going to bring RDJ back, you bring him back as Iron Man. You do an, a variant like we saw with Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. I'm not sure what the fuck they're thinking, man. This is insane, guys. What are we doing? This might be the end of the MCU. And I, this is crazy because think about this. This is the same guy who earlier today was telling you that Deadpool Wolverine could hit 220, 230, 240, 250 million. And now tonight I'm like, MCU's dead. I think I'm done. I, I think at this point with this decision here tonight, I am done with the MCU. 
And I, I, I can't even believe what I'm saying because literally less than 12 hours ago, I was on this stick saying, listen, I think that we might be on the right path. This film's killing, but it's not really for me. Remember, it's not about Deadpool Wolverine. It's about Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, those characters. It's about their personas more than it is about the MCU. So I, I'm never, listen, I was already just about one foot out the door in the MCU and Deadpool Wolverine brought me sort of back in now with rdj's doom i can't even guys i can't i i, I don't even want to watch this shit anymore i, I don't want to talk about it i'm angry i'm fucking furious right now that i can't believe that he they brought him the iconic most iconic marvel character in the cinematic universe the actor who played that character and you're gonna make him doom this is the I'm not saying he can't play it. That's not the point, guys. You get this, right? It's when you're casting for something, you you have to go for the person that fits. And if someone brought me this as an idea, I would say, "Hell, what? You're fired. You're fired for even bringing that up." So Kevin, and look who else we have up there. We have the fucking Russo brothers coming off of two of the biggest abominations of film in the history of cinema. When you look at the gray man and then you talk about Cherry, the fact that they're back, and I like Endgame a lot. I like Infinity War. I think they were very good for those films, but I think it's really Feige making the final decision. I've got to look at Feige and RDJ on a stage, and I'm supposed to be hopeful for the future of the MCU rather than slap, just bring a tombstone up and put it up there. Here lie the MCU. What year did we start Iron Man? 2007? Was it eight? Was it not? It was eight. Whatever year it was. To 2024 MCU, goodbye, rest in fucking peace. This is truly one of the worst decisions that I've ever been witness to. I can't even believe I'm here. I can't believe what I read. Let's just go through a couple of these things that I saw and, and we'll, I'll see if I can figure out what's going on and maybe try to make this make sense because right now it makes no sense to me. Here you go. THR, Robert Downey Jr. back as Dr. Doom for two Avengers movies, including Doomsday. In the multiverse melting surprise, Marvel Studios revealed its most bankable star will be coming out of MCU retirement for a pair of Avengers movies. RDJ set to return to the film franchise as classic Fantastic Four villain Doctor Doom, newly titled Avengers Doomsday, due out May 2026, two years essentially from now. Avengers Secret Wars bowing in May 2027. Kevin Feige also officially confirmed the Russo brothers will direct the next two Avengers films. I already just said what I think about that. I, I mean... You guys, listen, I mean, I'm going to lose. I'm going to fucking lose my shit here in a second. I'm going to lose it. I am so tired of people who can't see shit that's right in front of them. Imagine you have something that's literally obvious for the world to see. I always bring in my bottle of skull from Midsummer. that's an A24 FYC thing. I bring this and I say, what if I was pointing to this and you're like, that's not a bottle of skull. That's not a bottle of vodka. That's a bottle of Pepsi. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is the world we live in. If you think the gray man and cherry are not too fucking disasters of films over directed horrendously edited i mean these films are bad cherry was uh, torturous and actually gray man might have been worse it's really close it's so close the way that they edited that chaotically i went to i'm gonna bring the fucking popcorn i'm so angry tonight i'm fucking fear i'm gonna tear this son of a bitch up tonight this motherfucking movie i had to sit through this shit i had to watch this over at the man's chinese theater or now it's whatever the hell it is <laughs> what a grom no whatever the company is tcl i had to sit here and watch the netflix premiere of this movie and then had to watch the shit show of edits and garbage filmmaking that is the fucking gray man. And these motherfuckers are directing the next two Marvel movies. I'm done. I am fucking done with the MCU. This is the last thing. I don't want to talk about it again. I'm going to do two streams about D Deadpool and Wolverine, and I'm not talking about Thundercats or whatever the fuck it's called, Doctor and Captain America. I'm done with this shit. This is the final straw. Now, that said, I'll probably be sitting there watching Doomsday like the rest of you, but I 
don't want to talk about this shit. And whoever said that they that I was wrong about Deadpool and Wolverine and this is the kind of garbage that we're going to get and it's going to ruin cinema. Now I'm having second thoughts about everything I said about that film based on what happened here tonight. I can't believe what they did. And and, and listen, guys, I, I, this is it. I'm, I'm out. I'm fucking out. I'm, I'm literally on Shark Tank. I'm like, I'm out. This is it. Okay, here, here, here he is. This is a disgusting film saying, I'll tell you, I like playing complicated characters. No one says you can't do it, RDJ. The problem is, is that it was stupid. Someone help me make this sense. Someone make sense of this for me. And by the way, I had a drink. <laughs> so I, if I'm a little bit like insane, a little bit more tonight, we're writing a script. That, let me just say right now, the script that I'm writing with my partner is, is one million times better than any of these things we're discussing here tonight. I can promise you that. I will guarantee, I will buy each of you something that's substantial if the movie we're writing is not better than the decision to bring Robert Downey Jr. back as Dr. Fucking Doom when you just had him play the iconic character of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and die in a very heroic and touching emotional my god i think i was crying when i first saw that film before i got to see it early when i was on disney's good list now that i'm raving about deadpool wolverine they like me and then i hammer this decision this is why i can't ever find any footing in this town because i go from i vacillate from i love this to i fucking hate this shit and it's because it's fair we've had so many highs and lows this is one of the biggest nadirs in the history of the mcu i mean look here's the graphic and what did you expect every let's watch one more time let's watch everybody at the thing these geeks they all go there they crowd into hall h and they're like oh my god i'm gonna jizz all over the place right here it's gonna be dr doom it's a little fucking weird can I just say I know that a lot of F-bombs tonight. Like I said, I had a drink. I'm furious, too. It's This is real. Everything you're getting is 100% unvarnished. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Is that you think these geeks that are sitting there that paid money to go into Hall H and cram in there like a bunch of fucking sardines are going to go, oh, boo. If I was there and Robert Downey Jr., I would have to strip out the audio and you'd hear me going, oh, my fucking God, what are you doing? This is the first decision. Very they are literally sucking from the marvel teat guys this is bad <clears throat> if i was there i would have literally screamed they would have thrown me out i would be out of hall h drag weber out of here he won't stop ranting about how fucking stupid this decision is get him out of here get him the hell out of here felicity no i'm not angry <laughs> i'm not pissed they didn't offer me the role and listen one more time for those of you who are like well he has a goatee and look like grammar down here let me tell you why I have a goatee. It's because I wanted to look like Johnny Depp years ago when I added this to my lovely, you know, persona. And then I and then everyone was like, you look like Robert Downey Jr. This is not working. I wanted to look like Johnny Depp. It's a total fail. So don't tell me I want to look like Robert Downey Jr. So no, I'm not angry. I'm angry that this shit is the dumbest decision I've ever seen. It's so desperate. It's like stunt casting on steroids who thought this was good i thought kevin feige had a brain at this point i don't know if he does this is dumb this is so sad he must know that the only reason that deadpool and wolverine is doing so well is because of deadpool and wolverine and the characters that play those two characters right the the actors who play the characters he has to know that they know this stuff right hollywood is all about all of the details, the behind the scene, under the hood, you know, demographics and everything that they have the intel on. Remember, I tell you, you go to a test screening. I've been to several. You go to a test screening. Now I can't go because they're like, that's Weber. Don't let him come in. He's going to say the movie's terrible. Well, if it's bad, I'm going to say it's terrible. Of course, I will I'm not, not going to hold back. Accept when you go to a test screening, I do not you deserve. get fed all of this stuff. First of all, what's your age? Do you recommend the movie? What's your sex? I, I, you know, what was the best part of the movie? Do you like this actor? So they have all of this information. So they must know based on the 
the audience exit surveys on the way out of Deadpool Wolverine that people came to watch Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. They did not come to. Okay, let's pivot. Let's see what Phantom Thread has to say. Wish I could auto Book, auto control, save on all things business travel with Navon. Navon is the platform where employees book their own travel, flights, hotels, and more, and see exactly what they can and can't spend based on your policy, so you don't go over budget on travel expenses again. Get real-time visibility into travel spend and find more ways to save. Speaking of ways to save, Navon rewards employees toward their personal travel when they book cheaper options. With Navon, employees self-book business trips and you stay within budget. Ready to try Navon? Get started for free. Turn a thought Can't fuck with it. into a first draft. Choose Chrome to get help writing with AI. get to the big news the biggest news out of that presentation which was only an announcement and first of all i heard this a month ago and uh you'll see i'll show the video of it i was at the same view sort of off to the side there were a an army of dr dooms people dressed as dr doom that were making to the stage there was one guy dressed as dr doom that had a brighter green outfit on i could tell by the way he was walking it was rdj i pointed out to gary I said look at that guy it's rdj platform shoes was he wearing well, the no he's like five seven but um because well, a lot of times he wears those he, high heels to i met him years ago he's really nice mm -hmm. I, I i met him uh when i was doing the junket for g4 he had just, Robert Downey Jr. Has ju had just been cast as Tony Stark. He was on the junket for Waking Life, a Richard Linklater movie. And I met him. I said, hey, congratulations. Great job on getting cast. You're perfect for this. All he said was, I'm just glad to be in a movie my kids can see. Right? Mm -hmm. So they hadn't even started. It was only announced. So here is the announcement. We'll talk about it on the other, other side. But here it is in the room. Well, it's a little long here. I'll scrub to the end. You got to show the video, Chris. Oh, oh sorry about that, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, here we go. So they announced Secret Wars and Joe and, uh, you know, the Russo. Justice. You gotta show the video, Chris. Oh, oh sorry about that, Alan. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, here we go. So they announced Secret Wars, and Joe and uh, you know the Russo brothers are back. Yeah. But then things change to this. to the screen and he is he is, more, he is one of the more complex characters in all comics right Kevin? i mean this is potentially one of the more entertaining characters in all of fiction so if we're going to do this if we're going to bring him to movie theaters worldwide then i think we're going to need the greatest actor in the world to play that character wow okay Ladies and gentlemen, as proof of the unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi-universe, we give you the one person who can play Victor Von Doom.
UMass. Same task. What did I tell you? I like playing complicated characters. I hate this with every fiber of my being. It was going to be this or Iron Man, and it's probably both at this point. He was always going to come back. I uh, I hate this so much. We knew this was the signal that they had nothing left. Gary has said that forever. You mask the same task, and the task for all of us, including everybody in this room together, is for us to help create the greatest... This reeks of a Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a stunt. So let's get to it. Bring your imagination, your love. And it might be a stunt passion, for another stunt, we too. See you in two years for Doomsday. I hate this so much. Okay, so wait. Much. Let, let's, let's, let, okay, hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> we'll get everyone's opinion. Is this just another actor? Is he just playing that character? You know, they do that sometimes. That's what I thought. When I was told okay. this at the meetup, not knowing anything. Well, no, I'm just saying, is he just, you know, like that happens, you know, in, you know, people play multiple like Chris Evans and, and, uh, with, two different studios, two different franchises. But, but I'm just saying, or is he a Tony Stark variant? Uh, the words, uh, different mask, same task. What was the big conflict with Iron Man? Was once he learned in the first Avengers, there was a cosmic world. In Avengers uh, Age of Ultron, he created Ultron to put a wall, build a wall, so to speak, around Earth. A suit of armor. A suit of around armor Earth. around Earth. <laughs> Is Doctor Doom the dark, like, version of Tony Stark? A, a you know, a, a character in an iron suit, but with a, accomplishing the same task, but maybe went a little dark. I, I'll yeah. tell you why I hate this so much. Because okay. since... Since phase one, since phase one or two, I would say two maybe, we have all been waiting for Doctor Doom, waiting for Doctor Doom to come to the MCU, right? And right. instead of him being his own established character, he's a variant of Tony Stark. We don't know that. Well, they said he was going to be Doom. Victor Von Doom. Doom. He, they, uh, they said that on stage. He said okay, on so, stage. So then the problem Victor with that. Doom. So yeah. the problem with that, though, is that Robert Downey Jr. is iconic. As yes. Iron Man, he is That's Iron right. Man. He said it You're himself, right. right? I am Iron Man. He is right. right. He died in the best way possible in Endgame, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Died a hero, saving yeah. not yep, just the Earth, it. but the war the universe, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And now you're gonna bring him back as this. Well, let, wait. So like, the first, so the first three phases, uh, Downey Jr. as as Tony Stark saves the Marvel universe. In the next three phases, or the next phase, he will destroy the Marvel Universe, my prediction. Or it resets. So, this is just up to Secret I Wars, think it resets. Leading, yeah. uh, I think they are leading up to a soft reboot. Well, you will get after, you know, Doomsday and all that, they will do a soft reboot with a new Cap, a new Tony Stark, a new Hulk, or, or yeah. a new Bruce Banner. A new Thor, X Men, it's be, everyone. Yeah, I think so, but it'll be in 2030. I'm but saying I mean, now. Do we get like? Do, do we get Liberia? Do we get like? It, Doom I is Doom, know. man. I, like Iron Man is Iron Man. Doom is Doom. I want Doom. I want all of Doom. You know, like right. everything that comes with Doom. So what I don't get think we're, gonna, all, we're not going to get that. How do you well, know? I don't know what we're going to get, uh, unfortunately. And I, I actually wrote about this on my Patreon yesterday. And I think that they're what they're doing is you don't hire someone like Robert Downey Jr. and put him into a character where his face is hidden 99% of the time. That's exa exactly. So that's the that's reason, my problem. I think that they're calling back to, I mean, some people have mentioned the infamous Iron Man comic book series from 2016 that they're calling back to. I think they're taking a bit from that, but I think they're going back a little bit further to an issue of what if called um, uh, Demon in an Armor. And this came out, this was written and came out after Disney purchased Marvel. And what it is, is it's a story where Victor Von Doom essentially pulls a Freaky Friday on Tony Stark and they swap bodies. And that would make sense because that would lead into what Marvel has done as a studio recently. Is they, they pluck over the last 30 years. They don't really go back to the 60s. The Fantastic Four thing is a, is a fluke. All the other stories that they're focusing on, all the type of gimmicks that they're doing are far more recent in Marvel Comics Pantheon than anything they've ever done before. 
And I suspect that the reason they got Downey Jr. back is that they're going to have some sort of gimmick where, because uh, I'll pose this question, what happened to Tony Stark's body at the end of Endgame? We never see it. His memorial is just that proof Tony Stark has a heart thing floating on the water. So his body is, has no resolution to that. And I think something of that nature is going to factor into this doom where Victor Von Doom in Latveria has probably taken that body. It wasn't really dead. He's healed it back up. He's put his mind into Tony Stark's body. Tony Stark is stuck in Victor Von Doom's. And then he makes some triumphant return publicly to the MCU as basically Robert Downey Jr. playing Victor Von Doom in Tony Stark's body. As convoluted as that is, it feels like it's something that Marvel would do because you don't invest in someone like Robert Downey Jr., who... His quote has gone down since he's left the MCU. So he is actually coming back to this film at a cheaper rate than what he left. That is well, a fact. In fact, Chris well, Evans, I only think, got a million dollars for Deadpool and Wolverine. Or, or, or he'll end up being a squirrel. Couple or things. he'll end up um, being a squirrel, yeah. I, I have a uh, limited edition <laughs> Jack Kirby art book. And Jack Kirby did not agree with Stan Lee about Doctor Doom. He felt, you know, Stan Lee was like, oh, he's disfigured. That's why he wears the armor. No. Jack Kirby was like, no, he has one tiny scar. He's a good looking man and with the vanity. one tiny yep. scar, but he's so vain. He, he doesn't want his face seen badger. You've got this art. Uh, explain this. That's what script was talking about. It's what the common theory is right now that they're going this route, that this is all just a misdirection that they couldn't just announce what they're actually doing. You had to do something greater. So it's him coming back. But like script said, this is all leading to something actually bigger and the real, whoever that will end up being Dr. Doom, that this yeah. is just an intermediary thing. I think this is a duck blind to another actor that you've already got signed to do the role. And when that gets, re and they're going to keep a lid on it as long as they can until it gets revealed. Because ag again, a Dr. Doom, he, because he's so vain and he never takes off his mask, you've basically relegated Downey Jr. to being a voiceover role if he's going to be the Dr. Doom. But I don't think they're doing that. And I don't think that's why they did this because my experience, and maybe Robert, you can uh, attest to this as well. My experience with casting directors and directors when they come to getting a face for their film is that they want the face. Mm -hmm. And when you have a character, especially like, do you really think Marvel audience will, would accept Dr. Doom uh, played by Robert Downey Jr. behind the mask all the time, it, it, excluding the flashbacks to prior to his you know, deformation? Like, no, they're not going to do that. Marvel would, would never commit to saying, OK, yeah, we're going to do Dr. Doom, but we're always going to see his face. Well, that, the whole gimmick of Doom is the, is the fake, is the mask he wears and his you know, tyranny that he inflicts upon the Fantastic Four and the rest of the world. Uh, that's a fun role for Robert Downey Jr. And that's one of the things uh, I mentioned just earlier. He did an interview with Joe Rogan where he says the only way he's coming back to play Tony Stark Iron Man is if he gets to do something with the role he's never done before. Well, he's never played mm -hmm. someone that's possessed his body as Iron Man before. I don't know about you guys, man, but I, I want the cursed Richards, right? Like I want I want Victor Von Doom. I, I just I just don't I don't like anything about this. Rob, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> the first I heard of this was last November. Oh, and, wow. Oh, and wow. it was told to me by, I, I've kept this in confidence, I haven't talked about it, but this has been in the planning stages for a while. And I all I can say is that there is a plan, and I think it's a good one. Uh, my understanding... But that's all I can say. And I, I, to be honest, I was... It was told to me as something that was in the works, but not necessarily a done deal yet. So I kind of been sitting on this for a long time, and I don't mean to say that to be cheeky or anything. I'm just saying that I was, you know, it was. It, here's the thing: there are people that I know that I that work in the industry that it, sometimes they forget who they're talking to because <laughs> I have a really, I have a really big mouth. And this this conversation was, they were like, "Oh my God, you you're not gonna you you can't say anything about this because then it would have outed the person who told me." Yeah, and I haven't said anything, but I. I think they have a really interesting approach to what they're doing here. The problem, the problem is, is that the MCU has lost a lot of goodwill, and, and for and for them to throw this gimmick out there for for the people who are already skeptical anyway, mm -hmm. it just solidifies the oh, Deadpool and Wolverine was a fluke. They're they're going back to you know being horrible again, right? Like it, that. It that's, reeks of desperation. That's what. That's it is. what it, it is. It reeks of desperation. Is, it's like oh, you have to go back to Robert Downey Jr. because you know. Yeah. But, but the it's thing really is, let's just say, uh, to, are you willing to say that casting Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. Doom is going to fail this whole thing? 
I, I mean, I think more people are more excited about this than I, no, 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 no. See, you say you say excited, right? But and I had to correct somebody about this yesterday. Everybody in Hall H is always excited because most of these people are from like the Midwest somewhere who flew in for Comic Con, so they're excited to see a celebrity. So they're going to yell and clap like seals, no matter who's up. But there. I, I don't think this is going to. The, the this one move feels no matter the con so they're excited to see a celebrity so they're going to yell and clap like who flew in for comic con so they're excited to see a celebrity. most of these people are from like the midwest somewhere who flew in for comic con so they're excited to see a celebrity so they're going to yell and clap like seals no matter who's up but there. i i don't think this is gonna the, the the this one move i don't think is going to uh you know to destroy all the plans going forward. I mean, Dude. honestly, when I, I heard about this a uh, couple hours before it happened, oh God, and um, and I was actually kind of excited. Uh, but you have to understand the MCU burned a lot of good deal. The, the, the idea that Tony Stark is going to turn evil, <laughs> is going to be the <laughs> Doctor Doom, was like, oh, hey, this is interesting. It has story ideas. And then to see it lead into uh, Secret Wars, which could possibly collapse everything. To me, once let's assume that Secret Wars does collapse everything. What that does is it allows you a reset and it allows you also to finally introduce the X-Men and say, okay, let's pivot to the X-Men, grow that, and now bring everyone in together afterwards in some kind of a reset. So we get Doom for that those three two movies. movies, right? Three movies. Or three. Three movies, okay. Or two and a half movies. Let's put it. Two, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, so you're using the greatest Marvel villain of all time as a gimmick. Yeah, because they've to ruined, reset Marvel. They the ruined Marvel over the last Excuse five me, years. Jack. This is how they have to get out of it. Uh, but Man. by the way, I am told that Robert Downey Jr. himself pitched this idea to Marvel. It was his idea to come back, how he would come back. He likes Rob, voices. Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, was playing. that told me everything Victor. I need to know. <laughs> I thought he was playing Victor Von Doom. <laughs> that tells me everything I need to know. <laughs> I thought we'd never see his That's face. Heard. That's what I heard. Is Rob Dale? I'm hearing things. So, but um, uh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm saying I like this idea. I'm excited. Two things I saw was excited about Fantastic Four mm -hmm. and this. Be honest with you, man. I I, I kind of feel been watch an MCU movie. I think like they came else. sort of. I mean, obviously, if it weren't an MCU movie and it was like Hitman's Bodyguard three, then we wouldn't have that. But you guys know what I'm trying to say. If if you were to make the pie of the reason moviegoers went to see Deadpool Wolverine, it's for the characters Deadpool Wolverine and the actors who play those characters. It's not MCU. Typically, it's MCU, right? And then everything else is kind of like an afterthought. Go back and look at Eternals. Go look at Shang-Chi. Go look at any of those films that came after Endgame that really fell on their face. Most of that was MCU. Guardians, no, that's a bigger property. property. But when you look at the MCU, it's falling apart, right? Right. Remember, going back to the Marvels, the movie before Deadpool and Wolverine, we're talking about a movie that was at $206 million worldwide. That's not good. OK, that's embarrassing. This film, this film, Deadpool Wolverine is going to make more than that just in the States this weekend alone. This weekend, it's going to have more than 206, maybe like 220. And then overseas, another like 250. We're going to be close to 500 on this thing. But but why? I guess it's – is it not Hall H Day, Marvel Day at Hall H? We've got Red Hulk with Harrison Ford. I don't want to – I'm done. Guys, I'm fucking done. I don't want to watch this shit anymore. I'm sorry that I went so hard and praised so, you know, voraciously – Deadpool and Wolverine because tonight I'm just I'm done I mean there he is with this mask I I just do you guys feel me do you understand how you've lost faith with a decision like this this is this might be the worst decision casting wise ever in the history of Hollywood I know I throw that around a lot this year's been a real serious bunch of the highest and lowest so if I say it's the worst movie that I've seen in 10 years it's bad this move this year's been terrible okay outside of a few films this film this year's been really bad Deadpool Wolverine is for me not an MCU film it is a meta goof on Hollywood and superhero movies with jokes that are so smart. That's why I like the movie. I don't like all of the superhero bullshit. 
right? I just, I really don't anymore. I've outgrown it. I mean, I still have, I told you guys, I still have my Wolverine Secret Wars 1984 figure. I used to be a nerd. I don't want to be one of these nerds who sit around and discuss the intricacies of every minor character in every movie and live for every second of the next Marvel property. I don't fucking care. I want to watch good movies and I'm so sorry. I can't believe I'm apologizing here tonight for going and, and praising Deadpool Wolverine the way I I did and now tonight I don't want to talk about a comic book movie ever again I am so done with this shit with Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Doom it's the dumbest decision I've ever seen in in Hollywood I think tonight it, it's close to it Phantom RDJ was Iron Man now exactly no I, I of course they're going to come up with some spin that it's this, it's this evil twin they were separated at birth like we saw in Deadpool Wolverine with Charles Xavier's sister it's gonna be some bullshit like that because now we know with the timeline altering crap that we deal with you can do anything so they'll say yeah he looks like he looks just like that's the thing that's creepy right he looks just like iron man but it's not it's dr doom and he's gonna kill us all this is shits for kids i i i can't, I can't believe that I have to come on here and admit that I was so wrong about Deadpool Wolverine and the MCU because tonight I am flipping completely and saying I'm done. I'm fucking done. Tomorrow I'll talk about this film doing well in the box office. We'll do that. But I don't want to talk about the MCU for a very long time. And I don't want to see the geeks at Hall H lapping this shit up like it's a good decision instead of having someone like me there going boo boo and the nerds turn on me and i start you know getting into gig gigantic fights and i can take most of these people trust me because when i step up into the space when i'm there i'm not doing the role play shit my muscles are fucking real we're not shazam foam shit here i'll roll up and we'll start taking out some geeks because this is a terrible decision and they would have to throw me out of hall h and uh, trust me when i say this i would pause and and i'd wait for it to die down and then i would scream at the top of my lungs feige you're a fucking idiot i mean that it would be the loudest thing and everyone would be like who was that and they wouldn't even turn around that's weber weber got in here fucking weber i'd be like feige you are the dumbest motherfucker on the planet i cannot believe you made this decision holy shit how desperate are you by the way we love you rdj not in this decision i don't care what they paid you you should have said no let's flip it to rdj and i'm gonna turn on him right now an actor that i respect that i really adore and i go back to films like even going way back to a less than zero weird science all the things i saw him in before he became robert downey jr that man is a badass and a great actor and now we're robbed again i talked about this earlier with james cameron i sent a tweet out and i'll talk about tomorrow how when directors get locked into these projects like you know cbms or avatar uh, fucking joker fucking avatar i gotta sit through that shit again we are losing talent to garbage ip you know and in this case we've done marvel i don't even care what you do anymore because we know that when someone dies that can easily be resurrected or in this case just turned into another character so there's no real stakes so but the problem is robert downey jr if he weren't going to be doom and didn't want another 700 million dollar payday for each film i'm sure he's getting like 50 plus million for each film probably closer to 75 let's call it 75 million on each one of these films Plus, he's going to likely get back end. That means he gets the cash that this thing makes. He gets a percentage. Actors make so much money. That's how Downey Jr., he doesn't need the money. We need Robert Downey Jr. in small indie films from Neon, from A24, that are good films, not the typical A24 I've sat through in the focus feature films tonight, Dee Dee. <laughs> I was just literally like this movie is just so faux full of emotion it is so faux i was literally watching the cubic zarconia of emotional manipulative films tonight in dd and then i come out and see this and i'm like wow i have had a bad night i had a great day today celebrating deadpool wolverine killing it writing the script that's going to slaughter anything that the mcu's ever come out with and then i come out and i have to watch a bad film in dd that i really wanted to like, get out of the theater like the couple next to me did they disappeared for literally 30 minutes of the film and then i have to read that doom is going to be robert downey jr 
Robert Downey Jr. Exactly. Muhammad, you get this. Keep Jordan Peele away from these properties. Let these directors cook in their own space. Do not get them involved with these giant IPs. And I know directors, look, can I speak to directors out there? If And there's, I know there's a lot who actually watch the stream because this show is the smartest show in the in history of YouTube movies. Here's the deal <laughs> is directors say no. Just say no. You, you don't need the money that bad. Live in a smaller house. Drive a little bit, not as nice a car. Make sacrifices in the name of art. Do not say yes to the MCU. Do not say yes to Avatar. Say yes to your passion project, especially if you're a director who can get it made. Peel can, right? Go and look at, talk about a director who was fucked by the MCU. And what a waste. We just lost uh, one film, minimum one, maybe two films from Chloe Zhao. We lost in two films that we'll never see from Chloe that we could have gotten if she would have stayed away and not made The Eternals. Or Eternal. Sorry, did they got rid of the V? Did they? Get, I can't remember at this point. So that's you. You guys feel me? When you choose option A, option B disappears. It's sliding doors, and we have directors that are picking the MCU cash, and we're getting screwed as people who want to see good films. Joker is is art. Joker two is going to be hell of a lot better than anything the MCU's ever made because it's got true cinephilic leanings and Todd Phillips is a true indie maker when he started and now he's bringing some wild shit into the space whether it's king of comedy meets taxi driver or not I gotta say it every stream someone doesn't lose their shit and say well it's not original I just said that and but but yet he operates in a much more interesting space than anything that I've seen in the MCU that's it I again I did like Endgame but I don't want to see this shit anymore with this decision here tonight Sam Raimi uh real quickly I told you about this uh, remember well, here, I don't know. You heard this, right? Luis, I think I told you this. I have a very good source that told me that that film was taken out of Sam Raimi's hands. Sam Raimi did not finish Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Midness. He started it, and then someone came in. He was still there because the DGA said you can't fire him. You have to, you know, we're going to put you on the sideline, but you can't direct. You're going to be on the set. So you can get the credit, but you're not going to call the shots. So it was taken out of his hands. And that's what we're talking about with the MCU. When you go work for the MCU, you don't get to control. Let's have RDJ's Black Widow. Why not at this point? Let's, we're, we're being completely ridiculous at this point. But once you get you work with the MCU, you're no longer doing what you really want to do. In the Russo's case, it's a good thing. Right. Gray Man Cherry. In most movie, when most directors realms, it's bad. Like we said, with Chloe Zhao, with who else have we seen that's come into the space and been screwed over by this thing? Well, Sam Raimi, but I'm saying like a young up and coming. Oh, Nia DaCosta for the Marvels. I mean, Nia DaCosta's Candyman, along with Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele clearly has a big time influence on that film. But Nia shows really strong directorial instincts with that film. And then you you watch what happened with the Marvels. And you remember she wasn't even out there promoting it. She was like, oh, I couldn't do it. No, they pulled her off. I'm telling you, Marvel, I would never work for Marvel. That's the difference between me i don't have a price do you guys understand when you don't have a price for these people then you can operate in whatever space you want so when mmt does what we do i don't have to operate in any space where i've got to fit into some kind of you know box of you have to do it this way or that way no i don't and that's why i literally went from i love marvel and deadpool wolverine to i think i'm done at this point when i got robert downey jr in here back to the article and then i'm gonna wrap because i'm tired as hell I was, it's just a crazy day Downey back, blah, blah, blah. Let's see, does it say anything in here about how they're even going to do it? Okay, here, here it is. If we're going to bring Dr. Doom to the screen, he's one of the most complex characters, most entertaining characters of all of fiction, then we have to have the greatest actor in the world, said Joe Russo, a man who is so full of himself. You think I'm full of myself? Fuck me, Joe Russo, remember? Yeah, he directed the m biggest box office movie of all time. Yeah, you also directed Cherry and the Gray Man, motherfucker. Those movies are terrible. And anybody who defends the Gray Man, or just leave. Leave right now. Leave the stream. Hit the road. I don't care. I don't need you here. I don't want to discuss. We're not going to have any enabling for Cherry or Gray Man. If you are, hit the button and eject. We're done. We, we don't have any more transactions. I'm not one of these YouTubers slash Xers at this I liked Gleam in. I liked it.
this point who's like, oh, I want to have everybody watch. I want to make sure everybody's happy. Hell no. I'm going to say what I want to say, and I don't give a shit about who likes it or who doesn't. I never have done this show for an audience or trying to get likes like gore. How can I fit all of my takes into the box of it's not woke, therefore it's good? I think that's what, actually one of my buddies told me. Gore, They watched the gore stream about Deadpool Wolverine, and the first thing they said was the headline was like, Deadpool and Wolverine's great because it's not woke. I'm like, can you imagine being that pathetic? That's the most pathetic shit I've ever heard in my life. The first thing you're going to say about a movie is, well, thank God it's not woke, so it's got to be good. Gore, you're a fucking embarrassment. You are, at, you are at this point, you and Alan are fucking clown shows. And I saw you last week. We didn't talk. If you see me next time, come up and talk to me about it. You're fucking clowns. You guys literally aren't even real people anymore. And Alan, I, I'm going to tell you here tonight, you are more disappointing than Gore because you're falling in line with what what that dude wants to do and i can tell you don't want to you're like a prisoner you're like in one of those prisoner videos like where's alan he's like okay can i what can i say what can i say can i say this or not if i say the wrong thing gore is going to be angry godfather gore is going to be pissed well guess what you should say the thing that you believe, not how to fill it into a box of some bullshit of anti-woke garbage that you guys spew all the time. Oh, it's woke, so it's terrible. Cry baby bitching. Unbelievable. I bet Soups and Brandon Davis, the two biggest shills in the space. Good God. That guy. Those two... They're not even real people. Neither one of those people are real. Both those guys are, they're more faux emotion than Didi, the film I just sat through. That film is manipulative as hell. I want to destroy it tomorrow. I cannot wait because it's like 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Give me a fucking break. And then I have, this is the, by the way, record for F-bombs tonight. So I apologize for those of you who have sensitive ears. Let me tell you that Soup's, and Brandon Davis are not even real human beings. They are phony, inauthentic, and I can't believe they have audiences. You can say what you want about me. Certainly you can say, my God, that guy's outspoken, but you can't say he's fake. You can't say he's inauthentic. You can't say he's not fearless. I literally just roasted Marvel for the past, how long we've been on? 28 minutes. That's a long, for me, that's not a long time, and it's a long time for me roasting Marvel. These people, uh, is he? I didn't even know this. I don't even, uh, Muhammad, I don't even want to know. I just know there's something weird about the dude, and there's also some, and Soups is fake. They're weird. You know, I have this reaction to people who are not real human beings. When I watch somebody like we always hammer on Zach Pope, I'm like, I watch and I go, that's not a real person. That's not somebody who, if I were to run into him, I'd be like, that's not real. You know the people that are fake when you talk to them and they're like, hey, buddy, good to see you. Scott Manns is another one of those guys. Scott Manns is always, he comes into the screen, he's like, hey, guys, how's everybody doing? It's Scott Manns. And you're like, dude, who are you even a real fucking person? No, you're not. They're not real. At the end of the day, they go to bed and they probably probably say to themselves what role am i playing i can't figure it out am i i guess i'm the faux bitch like literally from from free guy it's like literally he's like a character from a video game or from augmented reality these people are not real i don't want to watch that shit what you get here listen i'm not even going to say that we don't go too far or i say some things i should i don't care i don't you know have i ever said anything that got me canceled and if i did i'd be like oh yeah go ahead i'm not bending the knee to you but i will say that i'm tired of inauthentic people i'm tired to people that are always clapping everything not hammering things when they need to and the other reason i'm going to go into dd tomorrow i'm not going to do it tonight why do you think people aren't hammering dd can anyone come in and tell me do you want me to run the trailer and have you take a guess do you want to take a guess why people aren't hammering it because you want to get go ahead someone take a guess why are people not hammering dd you know damn well why but i don't play that way and tomorrow when i hammer the film someone's going to say well you hated it and you're anti-asian i'm going to say oh excuse me roll up Bitch, let me explain something to you. Parasite, return to soul, decision to leave, shoplifters, go back to the farewell, to Minari. There's plenty more. These are all films I love. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, you you hammered Dee Dee, so that makes you anti-Asian. But what about the other films I just love that are all Asian cast that are directed by Asian, either female or male? Oh, but that's the world we live in. Just wait. It's going to happen. They're going to do that shit, and I'm going to tell you right now, anybody who plays the race card like that, you are more pathetic than the fake people we're talking about. You are not even fit 
to inhabit space on planet Earth when you throw that shit out that is gaslighting garbage. And I'm done with all of it here tonight. I just want to come in and chill out. I didn't want to do this tonight. I was just going to hang out tonight. And now I have to go off like I always do. But remember, that's right. Thank you, Johnny. I said everything everywhere was not good. And when I said everything everywhere was bad, they said, you are racist. And I'm like, well, what about Parasite, Return to Soul, Shoplifters, Decision to Leave, The Farewell, Minari, on and on. Oh, I, uh, that's different. That's different, Weber. You're not. Well, no, it's not. Don't ever and let me explain this to everybody especially the film twitter little fucking bitches out there don't ever come into my world and call me racist if you do that shit and i see you out we're throwing down because you are a pathetic human being i am never and never have been never will be i view films based on their overall quality and their merit i don't care if it's directed by a man a woman or a child a dog or a f anything it doesn't matter but to this world it does we have to raise the group of the you know whoever's marginalized i'm done with that shit i'm not ever playing that game we're not going to do that shit we're going to raise the people that deserve it and we're going to destroy the ones who do not we're not going to care what the race religion sex of it is okay you want me to just do this again go watch national anthem a film i raved about trans actors gay sex all this shit in there weber loved it so don't come at me with your transphobe your homophobic your anti-asian your racist this is the bullshit i have to deal with from loser film twitter literally the biggest collection of misery on planet earth so if you're watching here tonight film twitter remember you make the world worse not me i make the world better by calling it as it is i don't sit here and bullshit like the rest of these people everyone's great we can't say something mean about somebody scott mans is the gonzo of the film <laughs> Oh, my God. Why? Why are you doing this to me, Richard? Scott Manns is not a real person. Brandon Davis, fake. Soups, artificial. These are not Zach Pope, AI. I don't know. These people are not real people. So when you watch them, you go, what's wrong with these people? That's not how you really act. They're putting on an act. If I was on here doing an act, I'd be like, I'm not really that thrilled with Dr. Doom. I think it might be a little bit of a questionable call for Marvel. They've done a lot of good things lately, but I'll tell you, I'm not sure if this is going to work out, but I kind of trust in Kevin Feige. I think that maybe he makes the right decision often, so I don't want to, you know, rankle anyone down there at Marvel Studio. Do you imagine that, that that's what I have to deal with in this space? People that are like that, they're not real, except for when it comes to Weber. Weber's the worst f director. So this is, this is what, but this is what's going to happen. Okay, I think I think we've had enough. At least I have. Uh, man, I'm tired. Thank you for enjoying uh, joining me on that. Just for you know, seeing what other people have to say about that. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. now is doomed. Uh, I'm a, I'm a cover this as it unfolds. which I don't think it's going to go any farther than that, you know, but, you know, I'm going to try to do some stuff if everybody hears anything. It's definitely news. So, but, I mean, I wish I went to the San Francisco, I mean, San, San, San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. Anyway, Thank you for watching. Uh, tune in for more because uh, I will be watching more movies and you know making more reviews and watching more, having more f weekend film waves, as I, as I call them. That's what I call them. Uh. Have a good night. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe.